I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. Uh, there is a new feature that is in Azure Backup. So let's jump over to the Azure portal and let's take a look at our recovery vaults. So in this vault here called the Con Vault, I have under Backup Items, I have a virtual machine. And this VM uh, was one that I just created and it's currently backed up and protected. If we look at the VM's blade, that's this VM here. And this VM is a uh, Ubuntu server VM and it's currently stopped and deallocated, which will become important in a minute. The other thing that we want to take a peek at is our documentation under products, management tools, backup. And this is where we'll go under how to and Azure VMs and then restore data from a VM in the portal. So this brings us to uh, this specific piece of the documentation where we're going to talk about how we do restores. Currently in Azure Backup, we have three different kinds of restores relating to VMs. And that is one, create a new VM in place. Second would be restore just the disks of that VM. And the third is the instant file recovery. This new feature that we have is kind of a sort of combination. In the past, and we've covered this in our other videos, where we could do a restore and create a new VM. That would be if we were in the portal and we backed up this first VM, which is our jump server, and then we want to do a restore. And that restore of create new VM would mean that we would create a brand new VM. Let's say it's called uh, AA-2020. That VM would have the disks from the uh, restored older jump server, but it would have a new VM instance. There'd be a separate VM in the cloud that would have that same uh, internal OS identity. And that with it had some issues. Then we had another scenario where we could restore just the disks. And what this would do is this would put uh, disks from the backup vault as VHD files into your storage account. And then in order to use them with managed disks on modern ARM-based VMs, you'd have to take that VHD file and then build a Azure disk object out of that. And then you'd have to stand up a new VM attaching those disks. And that was more than likely something you would have coupled with a ARM template in order to do all of that piecing together and custom and restore for you. What we found over time is that customers wanted a more seamless approach to doing VM restores. Okay, and that brings us to the new feature. And that would be found under this piece of documentation here, replace existing disks from a restore point. And what this feature allows us to do is to basically combine the best aspects of both of those restore types of new VM and restore disks and customize in order to just basically do the whole thing all at once for you through the portal with a one-click restore. So in practice, what does this mean? So we could overlay the restore on top of the existing VM. This essentially does what we've had as on-prem traditional VM restores in the cloud with one click. Let's go into the portal and we'll go to our recovery services vaults into our con vault where this VM is backed up. Okay, and we'll click on our VM and we'll click restore. Like always, we select a recovery point and here's where now we're presented with those options. So we can still create a new VM in place. We can say that this will be AA-2020 and we can put it in the same resource group on the same network and we could put it into the same subnet and we select a particular storage account to stage everything and perform this restore. So the AA2019 VM would be restored quote unquote as AA2020 and it has to have a unique name because AA2019 still exists. So you could still do that method. Secondly, you could still do the restore disks method. Okay. And then at the end of this, you would end up with VHD files sitting in a storage account and an ARM template. But there is a new feature added onto this where we also will instantiate from those VHD files the actual ARM disk objects. Okay, so we do that extra piece for you and still leave you with the template so you can do whatever kind of custom restore you want to do. The new feature is up here, replace existing. Okay, and the only option that you can choose from is replace existing disks. 
So now we still have to pick a storage account. So why would we need to do this? So this restore process still relies on the same basic functionality where we will have to restore the VHD files to a storage account, create the VM disk uh, objects from that. We're going to then attach the new Azure disk objects to the VM and do a VM update. Part of this requires that the VM be in a stopped deallocated state in order for us to do this because we're basically replacing the OS disk, so it has to be shut off. Uh, there are a couple caveats into this process at the moment. So one of which is that if you are still using unmanaged disks for some reason, this particular restore process will not work for that. Okay, this only works for managed disks. Secondly, if you're using encrypted VMs, now, what encrypted VMs are specifically referring to here is the Azure Key Vault encryption based VMs. Okay, this does not mean that if your storage account is encrypted that you can't use this feature. That's totally separate. This is specifically referring to the Azure Disk Encryption. Those VMs are not currently supported under this method and you'd have to use the restored disks or the create new for that process. Okay, also custom images or VMs that have been sys prepped and generalized are not currently supported under this method. The one other thing that this will do, which is really nice, is restoring in this way is actually a added security bonus. With the restore disks feature, this is going to leave the VHD files in the storage account. Okay, so we're going to create the Azure disk object, but the VHD files themselves are going to be left in the storage account. All right, so let's take a look at what this would look like. So we'll go through the restore disk process and we'll hit restore. While that is running, what we will end up with uh, as the job kicks off is in our storage account, it's going to create under blob storage, it's going to create a new container here for the VM restore. Okay, and that'll happen in a couple minutes once the restore job uh, gets processed. All right, so under backup jobs, we see that our restore is in process. Okay, so the job is at 99%, so it'll wrap up in a few minutes. Again, another thing to note about the restores, sometimes they'll finish really, really fast. Like we just restored 126 gig disk in a minute and 40 seconds. Part of this is because of how the backup vaults function. When we run a backup job, there are two parts, the snapshot and then the transfer. When you do a snapshot, this is just like doing a Hyper-V or VMware snapshot of a VM. In Azure Backup, the same thing happens. Then there's the process to transfer the data to the vault. Okay. Now, based on this, if we hit our deploy template here, this is going to pull up the Azure template that's been generated for this restore. And we've seen all this before, but I want to point out in particular the disks. So it points out here that this is a managed disk and it gives us the ID for that disk. Okay, and there's the data volumes. Okay, so if we go to disks inside uh, Azure, then what we can see here is we have our VM that has the current attached disks, okay, the OS disk and the original data disk attached to our VM. And now we've also gotten the disks for the restored process that we just completed. Okay, so we get those VM disk objects, but there is also inside the storage account under blob storage, there is a container that contains the original VHD files and that uh, goes away once the managed disk object is created. So we do that cleanup process now for you. Okay, in the past, the VHDs would just sit here. You would have to go into disks and you'd have to create managed disks from those VHDs. So now we take that as part of the disk restore. We create the managed disk for you. We also delete the VHDs. But what you do have here are the templates. So if we were to, uh, to look at these, so here's the template file for doing our VM build, and this is where it's generated for the Azure portal to pick up on. And you can see here, there's our managed disks. OK, 
Okay, so that when you go in here and click your deploy templates, you get all of this information here pre-filled out for you and the parameters are all filled out for you so that you can just go ahead and do your rebuild and customize it if you need to do such a thing. These are just new additions to the restore disks feature. Here's the one that we've been leading up to restore VM and we're going to pick uh, this restore point and it's the replace existing. So let me duplicate our tab here. In order for this process to work, and again, this is all in the documentation, the VM needs to still be existing and it needs to be in a stopped deallocated state. Once it's in that state, then we can proceed with the restore. So what I'm also gonna do here is delete the disks from the restore that we just completed and we'll also clean up our storage account. All right, so we're ready to go. One other thing to note, and this is partially uh, why we need the VM to still be existing, is this particular restore process is going to kick off a backup. This backup is being taken so that we have the most recent configuration of the VM saved in case something goes wrong or in case uh, you decide that no, oh, this wasn't really what I wanted to do. So we take a backup and we're also going to do the restore. Okay, so we've got a couple processes, the snapshot. And again, the snapshot here uh, will be taken in the first couple minutes of the process, but because this is a cloud-based multi-tenant PaaS service, meaning that there are thousands of customers who all use Azure Backup, and the management plane receives commands, you know, hundreds of commands a second, uh, the management plane receives all these commands and has to process them. It will take a minute, two minutes, five minutes, for this uh, snapshot to be requested, for it to be taken, and for it to be reported back to your console view that it is done. Okay, the actual snapshot itself happens in a few seconds. So once that is done, then it will do the transfer to the vault. At the same time, this restore process is going to happen. Okay, so we're going to be transferring the data from the vault and then performing a update to the VM. All right, and that update is where we're attaching the disks back to the VM and then the VM is ready to go. All right, so all in all, this process will take several minutes. All right, so we have completed the restore process, took just over 18 minutes. We've got our snapshot that was done. The transfer to the vault is still ongoing. And then we had the VM update, which also completed. So I've opened a few more tabs so we can jump around a little quicker. Now notice that in the storage account, there was no container generated. We do not present the VHD files at any point. And so this is a more secure process and method for restoring your systems. Additionally, what happens is these are the original disks, okay? These are the new disks, all right? So we don't delete them and trash them and throw them away. So if you wanted to, you could uh, reattach these disks and put the VM back to what it was before we just did this restore, all right? So the new disks have been attached to the VM and we can tell this because this was the name of the original data disks and then we have them here attached with this prefix having the date and time code of when we did the restore all right and there's our OS disk all right so that's how you can tell which disks uh, are the originals and which are the restored disks so and the VM is left in the stopped deallocated state and if we open the VM and we go to disks, you can see which disks that have the, the restored time code are the ones that are attached. Okay, so this process has overlaid our configuration. It had done the restore of our disks from the vault to manage disk directly without the VHD files. So this process is a little more secure and it gives you uh, some more options and, and kind of automates a bunch of these uh, steps for you as part of the VM restore process, making the experience a little more like how it is on premise that you're used to when you're doing uh, any kind of VM restores. I uh, hope you like this video and that you'll take advantage of this new feature in Azure Backup. Hit that uh, subscribe button and the like button. 
give us a comment on what things you would like to see uh, in our next videos. And uh, we drop a new video roughly about once a week. And uh, so get subscribed. Let your friends know about the free Azure training here on the Azure Academy. Happy learning.